My name is Barry Schiffer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm easily distracted. <laughs> and I'm here with my colleague, Ron Wolfs. Uh, we're yeah. presenting today on the oh. display protocols. Uh, <laughs> we're we were yeah. planning on doing some demos, but we've recorded video and we'll show you why we are doing a quick video. But as you might have all noticed, the Wi Fi here isn't any, any good. Okay. Especially not enough for what we are doing. So, um, a great user experience in a VDI world uh, consists of a great, uh, great, what was that name? <laughs> Uh, a great performance in the VDI VM itself. So you need great storage, great CPU, uh, enough memory. But having a VDI running great in a data center without the display protocol doesn't mean anything. So the display protocol might be uh, the most important thing in a VDI world. Um, so looking at most vendors, they have like one display protocol. So let's not name other vendors and Citrix, but. They have one display protocol, and Citrix has many display protocols, as you might know. Um, if you look at this slide, you will see... Um, no, I don't want to hear. During our master class, it's very disturbing. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I just want to... <laughs> uh, you get more beer? Yes? No? Uh, yes, of course. Yes. I mean, more people want beer. So there are a lot, of, a lot of names for display protocols. It's not always easy to remember what to do in what. Yes, we can bring this. Uh, I don't know. 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 Is there anything else no, I was time. supposed to say during this slide? Move on. Move on. Move on. We're going to the next slide. So these are all the names you've seen over the past year, so next slide. <laughs> yeah, so basically, maybe this looks familiar. We've got a lot of uh, configuration policies for the display, and um, yeah, it's a little bit mixed together. So I think Citrus can, uh, can do a much more better job by uh, creating, uh, for example, a folder, legacy graphics mode, and then put all the policies for that display mode under that folder. At but least we have Rachel. Yeah? Yeah, yeah Rachel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. Especially for, for new uh, admins that, yeah, to find your way, it's really difficult. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's, it's more or less they are using the same policies for different display modes and that's uh, even more confusing. Um, so then, yeah, I think it's, uh, they, they can do a much more better job by rearranging the policies. So, which policies need, uh, do I need to configure? Yeah, I don't know. Do you know? No, so it's, no, no, no. That, that's, that's how we started. Uh, preparing for this presentation, so we're talking to each other like, okay, what's this policy doing? What's that policy doing? Is that codec still alive? Uh, is it there? Is it running on Windows 7 or will it run on Windows 10? It's, it's not always as easy as it might, as it might seem, and Citrix is changing names. So. And then after you have set all your policies, it's not all, always clear if this codec actually active or is it not active. And then we have HDX monitor and you have like four places to look at to know which policy is active. And then you have to think about what settings we're applying to this policy. Now I'm distracted again. And what settings <laughs> is applying to this policy. And it's, it's quite hard to manage it. It's quite hard to predict what the outcome is. And um, so today we want to make this as easy as possible because it's not the wrong. Sorry, the schedule of yours is going to be. You always have better than me. So our our goal for today is to make this as easy as possible because it's not hard, it's actually quite easy as long as you know all the latest naming conventions and know how to translate the old naming conventions to the new naming conventions. 
that's going to be fine. So, in the end, with all the names we've shown on the first slide, there are only four display <coughs> modes. It's legacy graphics mode, simple, it's for legacy OS. And what we should say about that is that legacy OS now means Windows 7 and Windows 2008 R2. So legacy is everything that's being used out there, and modern is no one else is using at this time. So we have desktop composition redirection. Um, frame hawk, of course, new protocol this release. And we have HDX thin wire and within HDX thin wire you have two modes. You have the H264 mode and compatibility mode. So desktop composition redirection is for Windows cl Windows client OS PDAs only. So if you, you are running on a terminal server that no desktop composition redirection. And what desktop, desktop composition redirection actually does is remoting most of the DirectX 9 commands to the local workstation, local endpoint. Come in, you're welcome to do it. Yeah, of course. There's no seat. Then you can, can stop Alex from bothering. <laughs> One important thing is that uh, this composition redirection is uh, a mode on its own, so it's not really combined with others. They made it a, a whole different uh, uh, mode, display mode. Yeah, and it's not supported in Windows 10 yet, or it's not coming at all, that, that we don't know. Okay. So the next one, legacy graphics mode, this is compared comparable to what we have seen in Xenop 6.5. Citrix used to call this adaptive display mode, the first version. Uh, they call it a whole lot of things, but you probably remember the, the adaptive display mode, which was used at that time for the most optimal video uh, performance. So legacy mode is only for legacy OS, so that's quite simple, you know when to use it and what, when it won't be used. Uh, works on virtually any receiver version, starting from receiver version 9. And... I get so easily distracted. So, and then we have Framework. Framework was introduced, well, we're saying in FP3, it was there in the hot page 22, in March, the correct? 22 or 26, I guess. 26 for RDS, 22 for VDI, but let's say it's introduced in FP3. Uh, you will need Netscaler 11, uh, one of the latest versions, and you need UDP. And one important thing about the UDP thing is you need one port per session, so if you have RDS hosts over 100 users, you will need to tune for more ports. Quite easy, but you still need to do it. And it works with the latest client OS, Windows client OS receivers, and the latest iOS receiver. I don't think it's out for Android yet. Okay. Um, and it requires a virtual channel. <coughs> and it requires a virtual channel. So if your RES workspace manager or PDX or Big Deals uh, is not it's working anymore on the framework, framework, you have to do some stuff <laughs> and he wrote a blog about it. <coughs> you tweeted about it. Oh, you talk a lot of shit, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have questions, go Andy. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So, um, inside ThinWire, inside uh, ThinWire, there are uh, a few uh, codecs. And codecs. Um, yeah, basically, there are three of them inside of the Hydex Greenwire. <coughs> one is the pure page 264 encoder. The other one is more or less the same, but optimized for text. And the third one is the ThinWire Plus, or also known as the compatibility mode. So basically, that's it. Three, three kinds of codecs. Um, by default, by default, uh, in, the, in the standard uh, PDA, I will come uh, on the next slide. Sure. Yeah, so the pure H264 encoder uh, requires a recent uh, uh, receiver version, 
because it must decode uh, the video stream of the client, so you also need some moderate hardware to do that. So yeah, moderate hardware to do that. Uh, it's a default encoder for the um, 3D Pro PDA installation. So if you uh, check, uh, when you install the PDA, you do the checkbox, then uh, this is the default uh, encoder. It's uh, optimized for video and uh, 3D uh, workloads. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, got, it have a downside and it's, it's compressed as also text like video. So uh, you can imagine if you uh, save uh, a picture with text like a bitmap or a GPEG, then you also see the text, some artifacts in it. So that's more or less the same because it's, yeah, it's all compressed like that. So that's why they uh, built the, yeah, the super codec, the deep, uh, the compression codec version tool. And that's uh, with an optimized lossless text feature. So it's basically the same requirements as the previous uh, encoder. <coughs> it's this, this is the default encoder when you do not uh, click the checkbox. So in the, in the default VDI installation. And this one is optimized for text. So uh, no artifacts, much more sharper. Uh, the downside is that it needs slightly more CPU because of the calculation, what's text and what's video and make the whole uh, calculation for them. And this is also why they switched from uh, uh, in-GPU encoding of H.264 to in-CPU encoding of H.264 because the H.264 <coughs> uh, GPU, GPU encoding only works with a certain Y420, I guess. The yeah, so it only were, is only optimized for, for the pure H.264 encoding and not for the H.264 encoding with lossless text. So you can still enable it for uh, for running it without lossless text, but yeah. what's this, the downside of it? Yeah, this code we also show you in the video, has more CPU um, resources uh, needed because um, it's uh, sending a base frame and then only the differences. So it's very low on bandwidth, but uh, to calculate the changes, that's causing some CPU overhead. So that's something we don't see in the compatibility mode, because the compatibility mode um, uses the same technology as the legacy graphics mode we used to know. So yeah, that's, that's the, the, the last one, it's the TNY Plus, the new uh, in Future Factory. Um, it works on uh, yeah, NUC version, it's backwards compatible, it's more or less the same as the legacy mode, they optimized uh, the code, uh, so um, yeah, it's, it's based on, uh, on, uh, on technology they are using uh, for a very long time, so uh, they are very good in this technology uh, also, especially in the caching, uh, bitmap caching. <coughs> Um, this codec is used when you uh, select the always lossless and the uh, build to lossless uh, uh, video uh, policy quality. So uh, they have the, uh, the, yeah, the true lossless experience with this uh, encoder. You also have a uh, policy, it's a visually lossless compression. They put it on uh, later. We also will show you in the video. And that one uses the pure H.264 encoder. And they are doing a slightly compression on that one, but it's really uh, making a lot of difference because you don't see it with your uh, naked eye to say it. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, it's more. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, so the, the true lossless uh, codec is uh, much more cost, much more bandwidth. And uh, if you checkbox the the always lossless uh, compression, then it's much more. Uh, and with, uh, yeah. Okay. okay, you want to say something? Well, if we go back, yeah, we don't have to go back in that slide. So, <coughs> we've called it TinWire Plus, well, Citrus calls it TinWire compatibility mode nowadays, but we think that compatibility mode is, is just a small part of what they've actually done. So, it's much more than just a compatibility mode. They improved its they, they made some, some huge steps in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the efficiency you need on, on bandwidth and stuff. So it, it comes close to the quality of H.264. So it's 
the, the most important thing is much more than just the compatibility mode. It will be, I wouldn't be surprised if most companies will start using compatibility mode instead of H264 on the, just for the LAN users. So it will only enable H264 on your, on your WAN or your remote users. One so other that's, thing is that for right? You, you can choose between legacy, which sounds like you're using something old. Yeah. yeah. Or you can choose a compatibility, which sounds like you're yeah. using something older. Or that's you can choose for the other thing, and then you're not choosing the rest. Yeah, that's uh, the naming. Uh, the maybe. Things. Yeah, that's and the naming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Choosing wrong names for. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, so then, yeah. you know, next year something new comes around, and then we need to name legacy, legacy, legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Super legacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why Citrix is, is saying, so legacy mode is for legacy OS. So if we, if we look at this, if you look through, the, especially the marketing documentation, it's not always clear that this thin wire plugin is just for Windows 8 and up. And they're still Windows using this technology for the, for the true lossless. So if you look at, uh, at hospitals, you can see uh, x-ray photos and things, they still use this one, so uh, basically it's not really uh, compatible so mode. Yeah, that's it's, it's that's mode. interesting because I've worked with hospitals quite a lot and they are very concerned yeah. about you know, lossless compression because there might be artifacts yeah, exactly. on x-rays, right? Yeah. So that's if you just, just look at these bullet point. points, you see lossless and you see compression. Right? Yeah, okay, but the... I've um, even had yeah. hospitals using reverse seamless or uh, yeah, yeah. from another vendor, just to make sure that um, <coughs> they didn't have artifacts, yeah. because that's the only that's way they can guarantee yeah. it. But, it. But that's the case, because this one uh, is used when you select uh, low, medium, high, but if you select always lossless, then uh, this one is not used anymore, so no compression. Yeah, so with always lossless, it would only send the frame to the client if, if the, the protocol is sure that that is, is pure, every pixel is pixel perfect. And so we have we have, we have a demo la later yeah, on. So, 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 to, so to sum up, Citrix are bad at naming things. Surprise! Yeah. Their yeah. products are better than their names. Wow! Shocking! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. So what else? Um, yeah, I wrote a little tool, and um, the tool uh, displays. It's not little. It's not cool. I call sorry. your own tools little. <laughs> It's uh, really an awesome tool. You are little, the tool isn't. So we have a Okay, basically, <coughs> basically uh, the tool uh, shows the real-time encoder uh, usage like the frames per second, but also the CPU, um, yeah, the CPU time used by the, by the codec. Also shows you the, the bandwidth being used, so only the, the thin wire or the display bandwidth. And uh, it detects the, yeah, the display mode that it's configured. So it's uh, really, um, yeah, it, it only shows you information that matters. So it will detect the display mode and then we'll uh, only show you the information that is uh, yeah, applicable for the display mode. So it's very easy for that understanding. Um, yeah, to, if, if, you, if you run this tool, then you already know how it's configured. Uh, yeah, it's a tool for admins, and not, uh, not for users. It's uh, used for, uh, yeah, you can test your workload uh, with this tool, and then see what, uh, load it generates on your server or on your PDI station. And uh, yeah, the fun thing uh, is that you can uh, change the settings on the fly. <coughs> so when you are logged in, you can push that little button over here, and then you get uh, a menu, and then you can uh, configure the settings like you do in the, also uh, with how you do it in the policies. And then it's, uh, yeah, changed on the fly. Uh, also, uh, the same goes for here. It only shows you the information you can yes. configure for that display mode. So it's not a bunch of settings that uh, yeah, one setting is for another display mode, so you're selecting it and nothing happens. Now, every setting you can choose will change something. And it's I think not like Citrix presenting something. New. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> for better understanding, and I think uh, this tool is. It's, uh, it's great if you take place behind your thin client or some older client or any client 
And then you go and run your workload and then select the options and look what uh, display mode fits the best for that uh, client. So what does it cost? It's free. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Woo! Sure. Touchdown. This is fucking cool. Yeah. 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 This is really cool. You yeah. can see the use cases straight away. How does this look? Switch it over. How does it look now? Yeah. Phenomenal work. Thanks, man. Rob, can I have a feature request? Yes. <laughs> no. And that's a policy output. Which policies do I need to configure? Yeah, so I, I chose the names exactly like you find it in the policy. Except so for Thin, 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 thin Wire Plus. Hmm? Except for Thin Wire Plus. <laughs> That's not that bad. <laughs> 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 I, don't, I don't understand what you mean. No, but we'll, we'll get there. No, we'll get there. No, but, Let's go on, Brown. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if you look at like where we started, that, that intern not always, always as easy as, as it could be. And, in, and you look, and for everyone who worked with ACX Monitor, you have to go through several screens to find out what's being said, then you have to look at another screen to find out what, what's it actually doing, and this will just tell you. And, and the greatest thing about this is we did some testing, you will see it in the videos, you can switch from DCR to A264 to ThinWire to 24 bits to 16 bits to 8 bits, you can switch around, you don't have to log in again. It's really brilliant. You can test yeah, so much uh, faster. You can also switch to desktop composition redirection on the fly. And there's also an advanced settings box, and then you can change uh, the encoder uh, speed and uh, very advanced settings. But yeah, I do not recommend to use that because then Rachel will be very angry. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite fun because we had some some comments from from Rachel. She she loved it, but the first thing she said was. Well, if this is done in registry and not in the policy, I will hunt you guys down like wolves. Mm -hmm. And um, so we did it. Uh, but with the, the advanced settings, these are things that are not yet implemented in the policy. So you have to change it in registry, but then you are on a level that's not really supported yeah, I don't think anymore. The advanced settings are yeah. <laughs> that will get you. Is there any way to, to, to get to the nominal uh, configuration once you finish troubleshooting? I mean, this case, well, just log out. The problem anymore. It, 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 yes. Once you log out and you log in, it will reapply the, the policy set in the ID and it will be back to normal. Uh, Except if the policies from the ID are not covered by yeah, what you're the, going down there. For the advanced settings, there's a reset button. Oh, that's if cool. You so in this case, there is no well, problem. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel will be happy in this case. <laughs> exactly. So if you select <laughs> advanced settings, there's a reset button. And if you <laughs> hit the reset happy. button, then <laughs> all the advanced uh, stuff is well, removed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this is how it looks like when you uh, when uh, thin wire of a framework is detected. So I give you an uh, example. We will also show you in the video. Yes. And it's always working. <laughs> awesome. That's always working. So uh, now that we have had this like textual introduction, we'll, we we go on to cool stuff. So we're going to show you some demos. Uh, yeah, so the first demo is. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you take this one, That's great. So, in, in this video, we zoom in and you, you will see how much bandwidth is uh, in use while scrolling through a, a normal MS Word file. And now, we, now what you're seeing is we, we switch live uh, to the compatibility mode. So, we'll show you and you will see it change, like, like right here. You will see compatibility encoder and now it's live. We scroll down and you will see that the bandwidth is much lower but especially the CPU time used by the encoder is much much lower while the frames per second are still are still the same and uh, everything <coughs> looks pretty much the same as, as it did in H264 so H264 is not really meant for scrolling through Word um, so in this case it's, it's much more effective than H264 mode So this is Adobe Reader, and here we're going to do something fun because we're doing the same test we just did, but then we will rerun the test a couple of times. So we're, we are now scrolling in H.264 mode, so you can see the CPU time by encoder and the, and the bandwidth output pretty high. And now we switch back to compatibility mode again. 
So it takes some time, and now we can scroll again. Uh, the frame rate, the rate was left right. this Cost high. Video, Sorry. <laughs> Uh, you will see that the, 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 the bandwidth output is, is already lower and the CPU time is, is much lower than in the H.264 mode. But the funny thing is that what we're going to do now is we'll, we will rerun the test. So we're going to do the exact same thing as we just did in compatibility mode. And watch what happens in the bandwidth output. It's lower than 100k. As the bitmap caching are doing its work. Exactly. <coughs> so we were like, okay, the tool must be doing something wrong, or we are doing something wrong. So we did it again, and this is all live. We didn't skip anything, we didn't log out or trick you. And now we're scrolling again, and you will see what's <laughs> happening. The bandwidth output is not getting higher than 24k. So awesome. I think we're finally awesome. getting to this 20k that we told you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we did it. Exactly, and this is, this is all bitmap caching. So the client is doing the bitmap caching and uh, it doesn't have to send over the frames again. Awesome. And every time you scroll down, it will <coughs> bitmap cache even more and more and more. Um, and this is not it yet, because if you implement a cloud grid, it is supposed to be even five times more efficient than it is now. We haven't tried it yet, we will, and we will post it on YouTube. But even if it's twice as efficient as this, then still it's like 12k per, per session. So Rachel's done pretty well with her team. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah. the projects that the leverage works. Yeah, she does. And, and that's why yesterday we had the what's new at Citrix, and, uh, and, and you know, I was quite harsh about you, you, you're mentioning the, the new features in FP3 and you're not mentioning this. I mean, this is, for me, this is the best feature that's there because you need less hardware, less bandwidth. It's, it's pretty cool. Okay. So this, go back to one. Rachel one. wants more pictures. Yeah, don't start that. So in the <laughs> pictures and send tweets, Rachel wants more pictures. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Just give me a second, we'll get there. Andy, what's holding so, you back? We're showing uh, the H264 uh, versus the compatibility mode in an HD video. We'll switch live during the video and then you will see that you don't have to log out, you don't have to restart the video, it will just automatically switch. So, uh, yeah, show us. So this is a uh, video, uh, the difference <coughs> between the full screen video and changing the... Very <coughs> <coughs> Up, <laughs> 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 oh, no, no, no. We've got to do with this on the speaker. <laughs> it's a good thing you're not easily distracted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it very appreciates quality. <laughs> well, we brought it all the way, so it was yeah. on. It was yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Just for this. No, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no stress to no break it. To break it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, distract them. Do a dance. <laughs> Do the panda dance. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's uh, get to another one. It's an example that is running through the different bit levels. So, uh, first of all, it's showing uh, 24 bits. So you see it? <laughs> okay. Looks very great. I think uh, the presentation is alright. Zero. I think Rachel will hate okay, this one, the black one. Oh no, this is the right one. Oh, this is the right That saves a lot of bandwidth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we can do some. This has been on this one. That's probably because Barry runs. Yeah, Barry, that's probably hard for me to say that already. Yeah. Oh, I get, then you're going to... Oh, this is the... Uh, 
changing uh, the, the bit levels uh, on the fly and we'll show you an example with the Internet Explorer you can see it's now using uh, uh, more than 100k of uh, bandwidth it's uh, playing on 24 bits at the moment Then we change to 16 bits. Yeah, as you can see. It's a little bit less uh, bandwidth. Yeah, the, the difference between 24 and 16 is noticeable, but for much uh, users it's enough. Yeah, this is to uh, 8 bits, but uh, yeah, 8, 8 bits you can really see the, the difference in the picture, so yeah, I don't think this will make users happy. Well, it'll make users happy if they're on a slow connection. They accidentally yeah, okay. explore. Yeah, they're saying yeah. they're screaming yeah. crap down the line. So I, I'd love to see this as a toggle switch, and I yeah. use it every day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. It's nice to do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, there's, there's, I, I think you're sitting on a, a really cool thing. Thank you. change uh, the codec uh, when playing a full other video. So it's not about the preview, it's about how the tool works. <laughs> uh, as you can see, it's now using the H264 encoder. And you can see the bandwidth and the CPU time especially now the CPU times are uh, more or less very high yeah. and the output, yeah, yeah. well that's okay so this is combination you can uh, expect from this encoder so now we are going to change <coughs> the encoder turning it on uh, compatibility mode and you can immediately see that the CPU <laughs> time is <laughs> dropping but still if you zoom out it will happen yeah? The quality of this yeah, the the video is still video pretty, pretty good. Uh, the bandwidth is going sky high. The so bandwidth is going sky high, so that, that's why we said yeah. that it's, it's for LAN only. Yeah. I mean, you can do it on the LAN, but it's probably be better to skip to H264. But just for, norm, for, for normal LAN users, I mean, 10 megabits per second is... Uh, yeah. Most users are not running full screen, but only small oh, yeah. videos. Yeah. 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 So remember, I know about. Um, Can I ask my question just for yeah. five seconds? Why the frame rates are so high? I mean, you, you set it at 30 uh, by default. Yeah, Maybe no, yeah, it's default setting. Yeah, you didn't think it would be wiser to kind of reduce that a bit? Uh, oh, no, we, we, we use the default setting for the price. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I mean, it would be wise to kind of, kind yeah. of shrink it a bit. 30 yeah. overkill. He's hacked your speaker. Just saying. Put it in. It's always Remco. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Remco. So thank you, Remco. We have a presentation later on, so I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> so remember I told about uh, the visual quality, uh, especially when using the, the always lossless and the built-in lossless. 
that's uh, really split <coughs> into two options. Um, there's the default build to lossless and okay, thank you. Uh, the default build to lossless and uh, always uh, lossless. You use the, the compatibility mode with no compression. And if you select the allow visually lossless compression uh, policy, then it will fall back on the pure H.264 encoder and just put on a little bit of compression. So it's not really noticeable, but you can see in this video that it's uh, making a lot of difference for the, for the resources being used. And you will now know so why we have recorded videos. That will be obvious right now. So first of all, this is uh, using very, uh, very uh, low light. So this is not doing any compression. So yeah, this is really, uh, really low. Yeah, 30 frames per second. Wow. So now it's switched to the pure H.264 encoder. And you can already see that the bandwidth is a lot less. So it's doing a little bit of compression and it's it's making a difference. Yeah, so this is the build to lossless example. And if you use the build to lossless, especially when playing video, it, had, it, it don't have the time to build. Build to lossless is first very high compression, and when you uh, sit still, then it will sharpen your uh, your uh, screen. But uh, when playing a full HD uh, video, it doesn't cut the time to do that. So you see a very low bump it, but the compression is still relatively high. So Citrix could make this adaptive, right? So you get the best yeah. visual yes. protocol depending yeah. on your situation, bandwidth, CPU available. Yeah, yeah, because it now be we have to choose. It's, it's it would be a killer, especially yeah. when you know those, those cheap, cool. thin clients, right? He shouldn't allow you to do crazy things your client yeah. cannot do, right? Yes, but you don't want to control this with policies because you Absolutely. don't know what device they're on. You exactly. want this to be one connection. Adaptive, I agree. I also yeah. want to show you, sorry, I can, I want to show you yeah. also the framework yeah. video. So this is framework when uh, scrolling some uh, some text. You can also see the, the CPU time is, is really <coughs> a lot for, for text. It's really high. So yeah, it's really, uh, and you can see the bandwidth, it's, yeah, it's really a lot for only uh, text. So how much pack loss do you have? None. Uh, this is with no pack loss. So that, that's the point. So that's Framework is an awesome technology, only if you've got pack loss. Not, because it's, it's, killing, it's a resource killer. Because it's, it's always trying to intend what the user is going to do, and that causes a lot of CPU. Okay. So if you look at the one, you're on the Check the CPU time for the... <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got you got more resources. <laughs> so but let, let's have a look at frame off in a packet loss situation. Yeah. Um, this is a video that's not shown by... or that's not being recorded by us. So this is uh, FinWire on 100 milliseconds with 5% packet loss, and then you will see that. I mean, it makes sense to use FrameOff, but uh, <coughs> do it whenever you need. And here's the thing again about what Remco said about being adaptive. That yeah, it needs to be adaptive. Yeah. It would be better to have a yes. framework that just yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> I hope you all understand <laughs> <understand. laughs> now that what is the difference? Guys, guys, finishing up. <laughs> One size doesn't fit all. You have many codecs, and that's a good thing. Uh, but it's good to know what what they do, when to use it, and, and we hope this helps. We will write some blogs about it, uh, upload the video to YouTube so you can watch them back, add some more information. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, this is what we said before. It's not just about compatibility. It's an improvement, it's innovation, it's much better. Um, it's always a balance between user experience and resource utilization, being it CPU, being it uh, bandwidth. and use framework only when you need it. So for satellite connections, terrible Wi-Fi connections, enable framework, it will help, but don't start and enabling it like it's the next best thing and it's for all your users because it will kill 
your system and fulfill your performance. Well, before we go to the next slide, um, we have had a lot of help from one of the PMs at Citrix. So uh, we invented a product manager of the year award. Um, well, we also wanted to point you to the templates. I'll go back and forth. I've okay. already told it. So yeah, there are some new templates uh, in uh, released that yeah, they're like a, some kind of masking which mess the policies are. This is kind of a masking that you can choose a set of templates. So this is Oh yeah, you want to? Yeah, well, she, <laughs> so we just want to give a shout out to, to Rachel. She couldn't be here today, but she's helped us a lot. She has written a whole lot of uh, support articles in the last few weeks. So even if she's not here, give her a big, big round of applause. I mean, and I think that's it because you were here. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. Oh, no, no.